No hat today. Feeling a little less insecure about my balding. It's a perfectly natural course of life. I'm just getting old. I'm, uh, but enough about that. Let's move into our week two battle against Survive9 and his Dallas Star use. I've known Survive for a very long time. One of my oldest acquaintances in draft league format was in the first season of the UPA that I played in, which was, I believe, season five. And here we are back for season 14, taking them on again. So first off, I'll show you the teams. And here are the teams. If you want to check it out, just pause the video and you'll be able to look at the matchup and evaluate what we need to bring. If you think you're better than me, of course, which to be fair, probably a lot of you watching are. But anyway, enough of putting myself down this video. Let's get into the team builder and I'll show you guys what I brought for this matchup. So as you can see, the first mon on the team suggested by my good friend Jose is a sub Groudon. Max attack adamant with enough speed for a timid max speed Primarina and the rest poured into HP. The moves are Earthquake, Stone Edge, and Heat Crash. If you look at Survive's team, Edgequake is not friendly for him. Arceus Poison, Curum Black, they don't take that combination. Deancey, you go through the entire team and it's very difficult for Survive to switch into this Mon. Put it behind a sub and he basically has to sack something to me, or at least let something get weakened by about 80%. Heat Crash is pretty obviously for the Ferrothorn, as it's the only thing that could remotely take Edgequake decently. Even that Max Attack Adamant Groudon is really strong. And I feel that that'll pave the way for other members on my team, which I'll show you here coming up in a bit. But first, our setup sweeper, Mega Belizekin. Back again this week. This time it's not a U-turn set trying to gain momentum. It's just trying to kill everything. We've got Blaze Kick, Close Combat, Rock Slide, and Swords Dance. Max Attack Adamant with 216 speed, this is of course enough for the Rotom and 40 in HP. Now you may be wondering, why are you running Rock Slide and Close Combat? Both Rotom Heat and Moltres get hit harder by Close Combat. The reason is, I don't know. No, I'm kidding. The real reason is that this Pokemon has longevity. Because we're not running Flare Blitz, we're not taking Recoil when we hit our Fire move. The only thing that's affecting us negatively is going for close combat. So I wanna limit when I have to go for that because Blaziken's extremely hard to revenge. The only real way for Survive to kill it once it's got enough speed boosts is to let it get a couple of defense drops and hit it with a mock punch from Conkelder. Or of course, something like a Scarf Alakazam can come in and revenge it, but there's always the threat of Protect. I'm expecting more so a Focus Sash Alakazam. I think it makes more sense to revenge Mega Blaziken. Definitely more of a likely bring. The point here being is that I want Blaziken to live as long as possible, and spamming Flare Blitz and constantly going for close combats is not gonna let that happen. I have to keep Survive on his toes, and I have to make him play around this as best he can. It's my strongest mon in the matchup, or at least it's a close tie with Groudon, and I really want it to stick around for as long as possible. Our next semi-offensive mon on the team, it's more so an insurance policy for me, is Dragapult. We're bringing Choice Scarf this time over Choice Specs. We've got Dragon Darts, Steel Wing, Flamethrower, and U-Turn. We're rocking Max Attack with 80 speed and a Jolly Nature. And of course, that clutch 176 HP that you guys saw in the last video. Who knows, maybe it'll come through again. But more so, it's there just because I don't need the extra speed. The fastest mons on his team are Alakazam and Arceus Poison tied at 372. I did forget to mention that is an Arceus Poison, and that is why Groudon can do a ton of work here. Of course, we are a physical set with Dragon Darts and Steel Wing. Steel Wing is there for Deancey. Darts just pretty much hits the rest of the team. Flamethrower is there for Ferrothorn, and U-Turn is just there to get in momentum. Maybe get opportunities to get in Blaziken or Groudon for free. Third to last mon on the team is Porygon 2. This is pretty much all I have to check the Kyurem Black. I don't like how much I'm having to rely on Porygon 2, and I might take my team in a more defensive direction down the line, make a couple of transactions, maybe get rid of some members like Scolipede, for example, because I really don't see it doing too much work, although it is a great hazard setter. But anyway, for now, all we have for the Kyurem Black is this Porygon 2. We have Foul Play, Iron Tail, Recover, and Toxic. Foul Play, of course, is there for the Kyurem Black, aforementioned. Iron Tail is there for the Deancey, not gonna let it set up on me. Toxic is great for wearing down things like Licky Licky, and Recover, of course, is pretty much a staple on the set. It needs to be there. Or Max Defense, because this is the best way of checking a Dragon Dance or a Choice Banded Kieran Black 
would be very problematic if either of those come for me. To aid my team in trying to take on some of the more potent offensive threats, we have a Light Clay Tapu Lele here with, of course, Psychic Surge as its ability. That's going to cut off Mock Punch from Conkeldur and make it easier for Blaziken to sweep straight through. We have Nature's Madness, Reflect, Light Screen, and Taunt. Now, looking back at it, probably not a good idea to not have any offensive move that could finish off a Pokemon on this set. Nature's Madness is sort of just to keep things weakened, and Taunt is here just to keep things from setting up hazards like Ferrothorn or healing on me like the Palisand or the Licky Licky. Really, I mean, it's a screen setter, but it's not doing all that much. We needed max speed on here to tie with the Kirin Black to at least be able to get up a reflect in front of it so that I can switch into P2 a little easier. I don't think that Survive would bring max speed Jolly. If anything, he'd bring Adamant with Choice Band or Life Orb and just have it Dragon Dance because it would be enough speed for Dragapult. Anyway, moving on to the last member on the team. Now, this was tough. I didn't want to bring Weavile because in theory, Weavile looks really good, especially with the Choice Band spamming Triple Axel against this team. However, Triple Axel is very flawed in that it can only hit once or twice or even not at all. Knockoff looks spammable, but when it's coming from a Choice Band Edmon against Primarina and Deancey, that's not going to do much. Now, Ice Shard is pretty clutch, obviously, that can help, but I have Psychic Terrain, so that can get in the way, and clicking Poison Jab is really never favorable, especially with things like Ferrothorn in the way. So I'm not sure what I should have brought over Weavile, but I definitely did not like it in this matchup once I actually got into the game, which we're about to do, so let's check out how this went. All right, here we are. Survive brought Ferrothorn, Kirin Black, Arceus Poison, Licky Licky, Alakazam, and Conkeldur. More or less what I expected. A few mons I was surprised not to see, such as Mega Deancey, but it did make sense. I did have a lot of checks for it, and it was pretty frail in the matchup. Didn't have a good time against a lot of my stronger offensive mons, and a lot of my Pokemon get steel coverage. So, good on him not bringing it. Looking at this matchup, I still do feel like Groudon can put in a lot of work, especially if it can get behind a sub. The issue is going to be getting behind a sub. Pretty much everything on his team can hit me for super effective, and whatever can't, or at least not hard enough, such as Licky Licky, I'm not doing a lot of damage back to. So it's going to be rough to get up a sub. That said, Mega Blaziken is looking like it absolutely destroys this team. As I mentioned in the team builder, it's most likely a Focus Sash Alakazam as to revenge Mega Blaziken because he can never let it go crazy. I decide, however, to lead with a Dragapult here, and you'll see that my opponent decides to lead with Ferrothorn, and we are going to switch immediately into Mega Blaziken on a knockoff, which I pretty much expected. That or Gyro Ball was coming. So I'm going to Blaze Kick right here, and it's going to do 39% to this Arceus, which is pretty good damage considering how bulky Arceus is. At this point, I've pretty much figured out that this thing is max HP and it can just recover in my face. Now, if it does that, I'm going to get up a free swords dance. I calced earth power and it does not knock me out, especially from no special attack investment, which considering that it's max HP, I pretty much expected it not to be max special attack. So I am going to go for swords dance. And as you can see, Survive stays in and goes for a Toxic. So this is a very good move. It's going to put my Blaziken on a timer, but Blaze Kick is going to do some work. So we're going to hit into the Licky Licky, and this does 80%. Now, of course, he has the red card, and it sends me out into Lele, which is unfortunate. But I'm going to go right back into Blaziken on Body Slam, and we are going to be able to... Uh, attempt to pick up a kill here. Blaze Kick comes out against Protect. Toxic is wearing me down. Speed Boost comes through. And another failed Protect allows me to take out the Licky Licky. Now, this is going to make things way easier for Groudon. Again, getting up a sub is not going to be easy in general. But I go for close combat here as Survive decides to bring out Conkeldur for whatever reason and go for sub. So now this thing is at 10%. And I have an Infiltrator Dragapult in the back which is very easily going to be able to knock out this Conkeldur. So I'm not sure why he went for Substitute there. I think he figured that I would switch, but I had no reason to, considering that Psychic Terrain was up, Mock Punch couldn't come through, and Blaziken could just do damage and then die to poison. No matter what I did there, Blaziken was pretty much lost for the rest of the game. So my best play was to click Close Combat. And it panned out, the Conkeldur is now at 10% and burned and behind a sub where I can still hit it. So I go for a Flamethrower here because it would cover him switching into the Ferrothorn. I do a good amount of damage there, but I decide to switch out into Groudon because another Flamethrower probably wouldn't knock it out. It goes for Leech Seed. 
I'm going to let the Ferrothorn recover, and this is a recurring theme. This Ferrothorn stays way too healthy throughout this game. Gonna go for Heat Crash, knock out the Conkeldur, and my Groudon is getting some leftovers recovery, which is quite nice. Now the big threat comes out, Kieran Black is here, Porygon 2 is the switch in, Dragon Dance comes out, and we are just going to fire off a foul play. However, the Ferrothorn comes back in, and I'm taking Iron Barbs, which is annoying. Knowing that this Ferrothorn can pretty much always switch in on my P2 is actually pretty bad. So I'm going to go into Groudon here. Now, this is definitely an opportunity where I should have subbed, but I go for Earthquake instead because I feel like forcing... Uh, anything to recover on his team is pretty good and he doesn't really have an earthquake switch in so I'm gonna earthquake again and at this point I'm gonna switch out into Weavile thinking he's probably gonna attack this time but no he goes for roost again so very good play I'm gonna go for triple axle 12 29 and stop and dragon dance comes out and I am choice banded so scale shot comes out and misses but triple axle comes out and also misses Roost is going to come out, and I, I don't agree with this play because it's risking me getting three hits, which I do at this point, and now he pretty much has to attack me with Scale Shot. He's going to hit me once, twice, three times, and the knockout. So speed goes up, but I'm not scared of this thing. I still have my P2 healthy, and we're just going to fire off another foul play, but of course, the Ferrothorn can come back in. And Survive Switch is back into Kirim. Good play, knowing that I would go for either Recover or a Switch. He goes for Roost, and Toxic comes out. So knowing that he would probably recover on that turn, I decide to poison him and leave him incapacitated for the rest of the game. Now the problem Pokemon is actually this Arceus poison, considering I don't have a good way to revenge it, and he just got a toxic off on my Groudon, which I had no say in the matter. So I'm going to go for Earthquake here. Obviously the Kyurem cannot switch in comfortably. It has to take 53% plus poison damage. And now we can just switch out into P2. Uh, I know that he would probably attack at this point. So he goes for Icicle Spear. And I'm never leaving in my Groudon. It's way too good here in the end game. Does get five... Is that five hits? Yeah, five hits with a crit on my P2. Not that it matters too much, I can just recover it off, but having to stay in on this Ferrothorn to keep my P2 alive so that I have some sort of response to the Alakazam is pretty annoying. I switch into Lele now and uh, Alakazam comes in and switch back into Ferrothorn as I get up a light screen. I know that the special attackers are way more threatening. I go for a taunt on the Ferrothorn as it goes for Leech Seed. So now I know that it can't go for a status move against me. I'm going to go for the Nature's Madness. Knocks off my Light Clay, but that's fine. I'm going to switch into Groudon at this point, and this is pretty much just a free Earthquake coming up here. Arceus Poison switches in. Light Screen is up, and it's up for quite a few more turns. So we're going to go for an Earthquake, and that's going to bring the Alakazam down, do its Sash. Now we don't have to worry about hitting through that anymore. I'm going to switch out into P2. Realistically, I should have probably switched out into my Dragapult at this point, knowing that there's no Scarfer. Knockoff's not a problem. Light Screen is up, so Shadow Ball is not going to kill me, and I'd be faster than pretty much everything on the team. And not having my Choice Scarf was probably better than having it at this point, because the Ferrothorn is still alive, but so is the Arceus Poison. So my P2 loses its Eviolite, unfortunately, and Ferrothorn is going to come out once again on Foul Play. I am weakening the Ferrothorn, but Leech Seed is is always going to let it come back. So I'm just going to stay in and spam foul play at this point. Spikes come out and I'm I'm trying to die alongside this thing essentially. So foul play and we're going to get seated. No, we're not because it's going to miss. And now we're going to be able to go for another foul play. However, the RCS poison comes out. I go for an iron tail. I'm not sure why I did there. I think I was trying to die to iron barbs and I'm going to switch into Lele here and knowing the judgment come out can come out. Uh, that's pretty scary for me, but I go for light screen in front of the Arceus and I'm going to switch out into P2. I'm hoping to die here and he does go for Leech Seed and knocks me out. So this is great. I can now go into my Groudon again. However, two spikes are up, so I'm taking a lot of damage. I'm at 47%. I go for an Earthquake, knock out the Ferrothorn finally this late into the game, and I'm calking Ice Beam and behind a light screen, Ice Beam is doing... I believe 23 to 26% to me. Without the light screen up, I am screwed. So that's a problem. And also this Arceus is bulky enough to be able to take Dragon Darts from my Dragapult. So that's also a problem. It can just recover spam against me, wait for the light screen to go down, get to as much health as possible, and then just start ice beaming my team. So it's looking like I'm probably gonna lose this game. 
So I go into Dragapult here on the uh, Zam. He goes for Expanding Force, switches out into the Arceus, which is now near full health. I go for U-Turn, knowing that I can live the next round of Spikes. Go back into Lele, and uh, as Light Screen goes down, because I know that I need it back up, and Ice Beam comes out, I end up being faster than the Arceus, which means it has no speed, and uh, Nature's Madness can cut this thing's HP as much as it wants. Uh, I make the read correctly that he's not going to recover spam because he could have to stall out my light screen. However, I would have gotten it back up. Now the problem here lies that my Groudon is a little too low and if it takes an ice beam, it's pretty much dead. However, there is a roll where I don't die. All Survive has to do when I go out into Groudon here is sack the Alakazam, switch back into Arceus and ice beam twice and he wins. However, Survive decides to recover, and I was a little perplexed by this because now the Arceus is at 7%, and he can't recover, he has to knock me out with Ice Beam, but I still have my Dragapult, and Dragapult is going to clean up this game because there is no priority from either of these mons. Arceus didn't have extreme speed, and I'm just gonna dart straight through both mons. So I'm not exactly sure what that Arceus was or what he was trying to do, but I really thought that his best play there was switching out into Zam, sacking it, going back into Arceus, and clicking Ice Beam twice. As long as the light screen wasn't up, the Arceus was killing Groudon. I think what he feared is that Groudon was actually faster than Arceus, and he didn't have a way to, to beat it if Zam died. That might have been it. I don't necessarily want to call this a choke because I don't think he could have necessarily known my Groudon's HP. Although I think he hit me with something at some point. I think it was Alakazam. I can't remember, but something hit my Groudon. It's po possible that nothing hit my Groudon. I honestly don't even remember at this point, but I think that was his main fear was that Arceus was slower than Groudon, considering that Lele was faster. And I think he just thought, if I switch out, there's absolutely no way I win. If I stay in, at least maybe I can take an Earthquake. Maybe he's not max attack. I don't know what he was calcing, but yeah, no, it was uh, it was definitely unfavorable for him to stay uh, in with Arceus. But anyway, that's our week two game. Again, I don't want to call this a choke, even though I put that in the title. I don't think it is. I think Survive played great. He got my Dragapult down to 8%. So once again, Dragapult last man standing with very little percent on the field. This mod is great. I'm loving it. Uh, I love what it's capable of offensively and even somewhat defensively. But I do want to apologize for this video being late. And if you guys are watching, I do appreciate you guys sticking around. I'm going to be recording my week three battle right after this one. I already had it, so... You guys are going to get pretty much back to back videos depending on how quickly I can edit and I'll be having my week four battle later this week. By the time you guys watch the next video, week four is already probably completed. So you'll be able to watch that hopefully on Monday. You might get three videos this week. That would be an epic, right? But for on the real though, thank you guys so much for continued support. If you guys did enjoy this battle and all other battles, make sure to subscribe, like the video, check out the socials in the description, all that jazz. And uh, for those of you who know me personally, of course, if you want to talk about things I did wrong or things I did right or things I could change with the team, that'd be cool too. Just hit me up on Discord. You know where to find me and I'll catch you guys later. See ya.